All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at my top EDC knives, or essentially the knives that run through my rotation the most. I try to incorporate these knives when I do my EDC updates, but there are simply way too many, and some don't always make that list when I just go over my EDC. So I thought I would do an individual video talking about the ones that usually make the cut, and of course there are more than this, and the additions are always coming in, so the, this is kind of a rotating uh, collection but a collection nonetheless, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram. The support always means a ton. Okay, so let's just jump right into it with some of the less expensive knives that are still awesome. So one of my favorites and one that is super small, super easy to carry, and one that does make it into the rotation a fair bit is the CRK Pilar. Now, this guy right here is a little frame lock, and this one is a bit of a custom. This is a large pilar, so it is a little bit bigger than the standard ones. And aside from that, too, the flipper has been ground off, so you have to spidey flick it out. But that is still actually probably my favorite way to deploy the pilar anyways. And then, of course, it does have that beautiful carbon fiber scale. And this is a carbon fiber scale from Flytanium. So this is a pure piece of carbon fiber on it. And that doesn't necessarily make this knife super lightweight. Of course, that means it has that stainless steel frame on it, so it does not necessarily, it's not super lightweight, but it is definitely lighter weight with that on it. So that is the Pilar from CRKT. This is also running on ball bearings, so it is a pretty slick opening little knife. And of course, like I said, it is a little knife, so it is nice to have a few small knives in the collection. So that's the CRKT Pilar. That's kind of been modified in a few ways. Next to that, I have some knives that usually go hand in hand. I have the Mini Grip or Benchmade 556 Mini Grip. This is an original in 154 CM with that like cyan blue handle on it. And this guy, once again, if I'm looking for something small and easy and discreet to carry, the 556, the 556 usually makes the cut because it is definitely all of those things. It is a nice little easy blade to carry. Next to that too is kind of my unofficial dedicated athletic slash workout related knife. And this is the Benchmade 535 Bug Out. And like I've said in other videos, the reason why this is my go-to for kind of just athletic lightweight um, knives is because it is reasonably small, but also very lightweight and very slim. And I definitely like that a lot about the uh, Bug Out. And this one of course is the Blade HQ version. So it has the 20 CB blade steel on it and jade g10 handles so really lightweight really thin low profile blade that is super easy to carry and that's usually when i carry it next to that another one that i do like to carry quite a bit is the spiderco para 3. now i might actually end up adding a paramilitary 2 back to the fold we'll see what happens there but the para 3 is really a fantastic blade such a carryable knife and it's pretty comparable sized to the mini grip if my memory serves Okay, it's a little bit bigger. Maybe it's closer to the bug out in fairness. But overall, it's still a reasonably small knife and a really nice knife to carry in general. And every once in a while, admittedly, I don't carry it as often as some of the other knives on this list, but it still makes the list and it is still a really nice knife to have in the collection. It is not going anywhere. Okay, next one up on the list, we're stepping up price in a little bit. Those are basically all the knives within the sub $200 range. The rest of these are all going to be $200 and up. And the first one is going to be ZT040562 carbon fiber. As you guys can see there, it has a full carbon fiber side. Uh, and it is really pretty. I very much like my carbon fiber scaled blades. And it has a custom tie side. This side is just normally titanium, but this one has a custom kind of uh, starburst pattern on it and of course this one is a hinderer collaboration so what that means is it is modeled after the hinderer xm18 slicer blade this one too is also on ball bearings it is not super super smooth but it is definitely smooth enough to open with ease so this one's a pretty good full size blade and when i really want the essentially performance of a ZT or when I want the performance of a hinderer but without the risk of damaging one of my nice more expensive hinderers this is the blade I will grab because 
steel is the same as my other hinder, my other large hinder, and uh, yeah, blade profile is pretty similar to just hinders in general. So that is that guy. Now, next one up on the list is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. And this guy, as I've talked about in many videos throughout the years, I've had this guy, I think about three, going on three years, uh, for sure two. This guy is really the blade I use and carry when I want a knife that's designated for either kind of uh, air times when you know having a more tactical blade might not be the most appropriate or might kind of scare people it might be an issue or when i want a blade that's super super rust resistant or if i just honestly need something for food prep and it's handy i will definitely preferentially grab this guy because it does honestly work pretty well as a food prep knife having used it that way uh, quite a few times it does honestly work pretty well in that regard but it is a super slim super slender and pretty much overall very rust resistant package you know has a titanium clip, titanium handle scales, LC200N blade, and so most of it is pretty darn rust resistant and if not corrosion, like impervious to corrosion. Okay, next on up is going to be the small Hinder XM18. This is the not necessarily officially small, but what they would designate as the three inch XM18. I've had this guy for just as long as the um, Spidey Chef, and I like to carry this guy when I want just a really nice high-end, smaller blade. Of my higher-end knives, this is definitely the smallest of them, and really, I do quite like my hinders. My hinders are really filled in a nice, special spot in my heart because they are actually pretty cool little blades. A lot of people give hinders a lot of hell, especially for their weak deployments or their weak detents, but overall, really solid blade and the spanto tip is pretty darn cool itself so overall just a really cool knife and once again with a lot of these edc knives you know they the edc market is so saturated with solid choices solid picks and so really what it comes down to is what do you want to carry what excites you what makes you happy you know to carry and so a lot of times that's kind of what ends up um kind of going with my collection is you know just I pick knives that make me happy make me excited to carry them so the next one up on the list of course this one ranks pretty high in happiness factor I'm not gonna lie I do really love carrying this blade and I've been carrying it pretty much non-stop since I've got it but this is the full-sized XM18 by hinder and this one is 3.5 inch blade and this one of course has the recurved blade style and this one has aftermarket purple g10 handles hopefully the lighting is kind of crummy right now but hopefully you guys can see that it also has an anodized purple liner on the inside and uh, this guy is just beautiful it's also running on skiff ball bearings so it is super smooth and uh, it is a drop shut piece so pretty amazing knife, really do love it. It is just such a fantastic blade. Some people, uh, especially on my Instagram, have not been showing it love, but that's okay. I really, I'm personally a fan of purple and uh, this blade just does it for me. I really like the recurve blade, the purple handle scales, the purple like accents on it. It is just a nice blade overall. It's just a nice blade overall and it is just so smooth it fires so hard especially with those skiff ball bearings uh you know once again it's so smooth and so when you fire it it just fires out so hard you can be real gentle with it you can be real hard with it it doesn't matter it's going to lock up perfectly or it's going to fire up into the lock locked position perfectly every time so absolutely love that three and a half inch uh, hinder xm18 Okay, now getting into some other knives that excite me almost as much. <laughs> First one is, of course, the CRK um, Sabenza 21. I have to resist the urge to call it a Pacific because if you guys know the channel, you know I've been talking a lot in the past few years about my uh, Pacific. And while I do love my CRK Pacific, we're talking about EDC knives here. So this is the Sabenza 21. And I've had this guy for quite a few years, I think about three now. And this one, of course, is in the Tonto or Tinto variant uh, blade tip and this one's made out of s35 vn and it has the carbon fiber or not carbon fiber wish <laughs> i wish i had that it had it has canvas micarta inlays on the handle so absolutely beautiful piece i do love my sabenzas i love my chris reeve knives as a whole i have quite a few of them once again the pacific uh the sabenza the Nkosi, um 
really do love my Chris Reeve knives and especially from the EDC standpoint of the Sebenza and the Encosi, which we'll get to in a moment here, they are just super carryable because they look high end. They're super nice. They blend into just about any situation you need a knife for. So with that introduction too, that is also the Chris Reeve Knives Incosi. I forgot to mention that is a large Sebenza and this is also a large Incosi. So they are basically the same size and uh, overall say a lot of same uh, kind of specifications. It's just the Incosi is basically a more modern version of the Sebenza. This one also, as you guys can probably see here, has the micarta inlays. So once again, a very similar blade to my Sebenza, which is totally okay with me. I love my Sebenza and I really am starting to warm up to this Incosi. And I actually wanted an Incosi for some time. So adding one to the fold is really uh, quite appreciated. I really do like it. It is definitely, for me, in my opinion, a step up from the Sebenza in just about every way. So really do like the Incosi. I would heavily recommend if you can find one of these guys, pick it up. Unfortunately, unlike Sebenzas, Incosis are a little bit harder to find. This guy wants to drop shut for me, <laughs> but they are a bit harder to find. I had to search all over the web and I'm not going to reveal the location where I got mine, but I did end up finding it at, a, on, at an online retailer. So I was able to pick one up, but it did take hours of searching and scouring the web to find a place that had a large and cozy. So next one and last one up on the list for my EDC blades is the Strider SNG. So once again, I've been kind of just unofficially doing this by price and by price that I paid for them. And I do realize that the uh, Sebenza and the Nkosi, like many Chris Reeve knives, have actually just got priced up. So by the time you guys see this video, they are actually the more expensive knives, more expensive than the Strider. But at the time I purchased them, even though I purchased the Nkosi just like a week before the price hike, um, Side, that aside, they are technically less expensive than this guy. Uh, this is a Strider SNG and I paid about 600 for this guy and paid about 550, well not about, I paid 550 for both of my CRKs. So this one is a little bit more expensive, but still in the same ballpark. But like I was saying, this is my Strider SNG and this is another one that I do love to carry. I like that this one kind of is reserved as my high end kind of folding tank and uh, that's kind of how I treat it. Not necessarily openly trying to abuse it but this is one that if I go into the wilderness this is usually the EDC knife or if I'm going camping or something like that I'll keep this one on me for a folder I'll keep this one on me for a folder because it's just a more tanky blade it's a thicker stock of steel on it and it's designed to be used hard so it is definitely in that regard my kind of hard use folder I don't really love or subscribe to the hard use kind of tanky folder mantra of you know things like the Medford Praetorian or things that are just ridiculously overbuilt but I think that the striders most of them like the SMF the SNG are tastefully overbuilt where it's you know just on that border of being tanky hard use but it's not so far over the edge that it's ending up like carrying a five pound piece of titanium with a piece of sharpened steel on it you know it's uh, a pretty reasonable pretty carryable package and if nothing else it's just a fun knife to have around and to have in the collection so just another knife that kind of excites me if you will um, for EDC. Anyways, guys, that has been a look at my EDC knives. I do, like I said, have more, but these are primarily the EDC knives that run through my rotation. And like I said, I just wanted to make an individual video talking about these knives because you won't always see them in EDC updates, even though you will see things probably like the Nkosi, the XM18 3.5, Strider SNG are usually ones that you'll see because I would say those make up maybe a little bit more does make up a little bit more of my average carry uh, usually. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.